Could you imagine having about 20 foot of snow? But uh, we're glad that you're here this morning. Are we going live right now? Okay, let's welcome those that's going to walk. We're back going live. Give God a hand for that. <laughs> Amen. It's uh, uh, been a journey, but uh, it seems like every time you think you have everything worked out, something happens, but thank God that we're back. We want to welcome all those that will be watching us live and those that watch us, because I'm telling you, when I hear people that tell me they've watched this from uh, other places and how blessed they are, and I always tell them you need to be here in person because there's an anointing in this place. I, I truly believe I've been to many churches. I'd hate to say how many, but I've never felt an anointing like you do at the House of God Worship Center. And this is Palm Sunday. Amen. Yeah. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. And, and this is what Christians, this is they, the world calls it our most holy day. Of course, we understand that, that Easter's every day with us. Every day is holy. But, but I'm so glad that we celebrate and bring attention to the resurrection, the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I remember last uh, Easter, if you remember, they, were, they, were, they didn't want people having churches, and we had church over on the, over on the lake and had communion. Wasn't that awesome? I, I was thinking about it, that to feel the presence of God. It kind of rained that day. didn't matter. We still had an awesome time. Can we just stand and welcome the Lord? Have his way in our service today. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord, and we worship you. Lord, and we thank you, Father, for all that you've done, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, that I'm here today, God, the privilege to be here, God. Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for healing and for victory, Lord. And Father, for those that are sick this morning, Lord, that cannot be here, Lord, we pray for a healing touch right now. And Lord, we pray for those that are, Lord, that are flooded in, Lord, that can't get out, God. We pray for their safety, Lord, and that their that their houses and their tools and stuff, Lord, will not be destroyed in this water. Lord, we pray a covering upon them, God. And Lord, we ask today, God, that you receive our worship. Lord, let this be a day of worship. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we cry holy to the Lord. We cry holy to the
remember every victory and how he wrote my story. The moment that I crossed from death to life. So if the battle rages, I'm safe here in his presence. For I know he's never lost a fight. And I'm going to sing like the battle is over. I'm going to dance like the war is won. Every prison door swings open wide. The king is over. Hey! And I'm going to sing like the battle is over. And I'm going to dance like the war is won.
lift your voices up right now. If you can pray in the Spirit, sing in the Spirit, do that right now. You can't sing in the Spirit. Just begin to lift your voice up. Release your song to the Lord this morning. Focus on him. Hold on, my nose, head on my day, head on my heart. Oh, Shanada, my dear, hey, I know. Shanada, the head. Oh, the king is all
welcome you in this place to fill this very room. Welcome you in this place to fill this very room. Shed on my door, oh, Wale. Hold on my door, oh, Shana, la, ma.
just want to be with you. Shana Maha. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Shere me ande. Ora mane a yo shere. Yo haku you. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. King of glory. King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me make get my announcements and we'll just I know that I know a lot of people slutted out today and but I'm glad that you ventured out. You may be seated just a moment. Uh, it makes me glad to see that people just press through. I'm excited. And a lot of you that's watching, you may be flooded in today. But just let the presence of God just touch you. I don't know if Sister Burp will be watching us live. She's still in ICU or she's getting in. She got out. So she may be watching us. Can we give Sister Burp a hand? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sister Burp, we love you. And God will totally restore you because he is a healing God. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God. I didn't get to make it thirsty, but uh, Sister Becky is telling me it's such a wonderful spirit, and, and there was visitors here, and it seemed like God ministered to everybody. I th it's just awesome. I'm glad that we're not a church. It's a pastor church. I think a church should be, no matter who's here, the Spirit of God moves. Amen. Amen. I, I don't think it, you know, I, bet, I used to, Years ago, fill in for pastors when they was on vacation. So I'm going to tell you something. You walk in some church and pastor's gone, he was walking into a graveyard. <laughs> Point blank, as is simple, because they were pastor churches. We get, we're a God church. Amen. Amen. We got people around here that know the Lord. <laughs> and, and I'm excited. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. I, I cannot tell you, God has not shown me exactly, 
But there's something that will be set loose next week that's going to change the House of God Worship Center forever. Now, I'm not telling you that God showed me everything about the word 80. I, God gave me the word 80 the other day. And some of you watching said, what's 80 mean? I didn't know what it meant either. But God has showed me through people who have talked to me and then through my prayer that Moses was right around 80 when God told him it's time to leave, to leave my people out of Egypt. Joshua was a little around 80 when he took over for Moses and God said it's time to lead my people to the other side. In other words, I'm telling you, God is saying the year of completion is here and it's time to go into the harvest. Amen. It's time for breakthrough. We're going to see. I'm, I'm going to just tell you, if you're watching this and you get to watch this this week as you watch this, I want you to know something. If you want to be a part of a move of God, you better come to the House of God Worship Center. The, this place is going to shake under the anointing power of God. We're going to see salvation and miracles and signs and wonders like we've never seen. Can somebody say amen? amen. God has promised it, and I'm going to tell you, God does not lie, and he keeps his word. Amen. Anybody here excited about what God's about to do? God is good. And uh, so next Sunday's Easter, the Sunday after it, Brother Tom will be ministering. Like I said, it doesn't matter who's ministering. It's, it's God. Amen? I'm excited. I can't wait to hear these other ministers minister. I feel an anointing come down. I'm just taking my time. It, it's, it's, I feel an awesome anointing come down. I don't know why every time I get in the pulpit, I get the spirit of prophecy. <laughs> I don't understand. I was talking to a minister yesterday, and, and uh, we were talking, and I, I was, actually I had called him, got in touch with him. That I'm a, I love to pick people's brains, and if I need to know something, I think go to somebody that knows. And so, but we got talking, and, and uh, as we was talking, we were talking about tent ministry. And, and I'm telling you, I'm saying that to say this. God has spoke this into my heart. He is, I don't understand it. Because when God spoke it in my heart, I said, God, I'm too old. I'm telling you, it takes a dedication to go outside the walls of the church. It takes a, it takes a lot out of you. And I can tell you right now, if I don't have you with me, I couldn't do it. Your life will be turned upside down. But here's what God told me. He said, you tell the people that if they want to see souls saved and invest in something, invest. And I'm saying this because there's people listening. It's time to house of God. Worship. We're going to get a tent. Can I tell you how God moves? This week I got my first donation on one from out of state. Somebody said, I haven't even announced this yet. I got a check in the mail and said, this is for your tent. <laughs> is that not God? We were, we're negotiating on some fold-out metal chairs because we're going to have outside services here and other places, and we need these fold-out chairs, which is just convenient and hold up good. And I had located some up north in Pennsylvania, and they looked bad, but there's just none out there. And we had negotiated, been negotiating for a while. If you know me, I like to negotiate. And uh, immediately, when I got off the phone with this man talking about tents, I looked at my phone and up popped brand new looking chairs with the rack that rose on them, the double tier racks, as cheap as I could get the old wore out ones with no rack. And these are in, in Sevierville within an hour range of the church. Can I have an amen on that? Amen. You tell me God ain't getting anything. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, if you got shot and shoes, put them on. If you got special clothes you like to worship God in, put them on. If you're ready to see salvation and the bondage of sin. I, I believe that Claiborne County has been under an, a, a demonic bondage for a long time. And I believe all hell's broke loose because God says I'm tired of this. 
And it's time the church stands up and says what they mean, preaches what the word says, and does what God says to do. Glory. I feel an anointing. Just get ready. And so we got to have people to work this. We got to have worshipers. And I, I want to see a youth choir. Come on now. I want to see. I want to see. Luke, I want to see. Horn blowers, guitar players, I don't care what they play. Wouldn't that be something? How many believe God can do it? Give God a hand if you if you think it's gonna happen. I believe it this time. This time. Well, glory to God. Uh, I, I get it too excited. I, I've had a trying week, but God has blessed me. Sister Becky uh, puts on healing scriptures that play all night long. And so it was a few nights I couldn't hardly sleep. And so every few minutes I was listening to healing scriptures. I may have read them a thousand times. I may have could have quoted every one of them. But it's just something about hearing them in the midnight hours. It's just something about hearing it does something to you. And I, I just thank the church for your prayers and what God's done. He's a mighty God. Amen. We're going to ask Sister Becky should come. We want to bless the offering and those that give. And those that don't have to give, we want to bless you. There's such a gift, a blessing in giving to God. Such a bless. Put your oh, right hand up. Amen. This is my tithe and offering, and it will do what God says it will do. The windows of heaven are open over me and my house, and such blessings have been released that I do not have adequate room to contain them all. I am the seed of Abraham, and the oath God swore to him is my inheritance. Therefore, I release my tithes and my offerings into the fertile soil of his presence. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Amen. Mighty God. Let's stand one more time. Let's sing it. I exalt thee, Lord. That's just been on my heart for the last week because I do exalt him.
Let the Holy Spirit just touch you right now. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. just one more time I'm going to just tell you what I feel the spirit speaking to me I feel the spirit in my heart saying I will not put new wine in old wine skins he said I'm doing a new thing and I will not do it through the old things he said I'm doing a new thing Yea, I say to thee, I will reach those that are unreachable. Yea, I will reach those that are down and out, those that have no help, no hope at all. Yea, I say to thee, I will break the bonds that are upon my upon the people, upon my people. Yea, I say to thee, I can set free. I can deliver from your lifestyle and I can place you upon the rock. Yea, I say to thee, I can heal your body and I can raise you up in this hour. I say to thee, I am God and I have not lost my power. Yea, I say to thee, I am God. I say to thee, shed off the old things. Yea, I say to thee, shed off the old things. Yea, I will give thee anew, anew, and I will flood thee. You know what happens when you try to place the, new, the Holy Spirit in the old things? It busts us. Can somebody hear me? You know what the church has tried to do for 25, 30 years? We've always want the Holy Spirit to work our way. And it's never worked. It, it, it works a little, but that's it because it, it cannot. God said, I'm giving you a new thing. I'm pouring out something new upon you. When I say new thing, I'm not talking about a new spirit. It's going to be the same spirit. But it has to be a new vessel, a willing vessel, a praising vessel, a, a, a vessel that's willing to place itself in the potter's hand and let the potter bring the vessel up. Hallelujah. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. You, you can almost smell them in here, can't you? The Holy Spirit has a sweet smell. Hallelujah. The rose of Sharon. Hallelujah. He says, I'm the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. What a mighty God. One more time. I just, I, I'm not going to preach long. I promise. exalt the Lord right now. He said, lift him up. Hallelujah. I can feel things beginning to change as we even, as we even worship him this morning.
Give God a hand clap of worship in the place. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and change the service this morning. Wasn't that awesome? To feel his presence. Glory. To feel the anointing of the Lord. I feel such a spirit of prophecy here today because I know God's doing things. And when God speaks things to you, sometimes he gives you the freedom to, to tell others. And he's a mighty God. He's just a mighty God. Amen. We're going to uh, we're going to preach just a little bit this morning, minister just a little bit on Hosanna. Blessed be the King. Hosanna. Blessed be the King. This is Palm Sunday, and I'll give you just a minute so we may get back. Uh, we're going to be in Matthew the twenty-first chapter. We're going to start there in the eighth verse. Just read a couple verses, two or three this morning, and. I just want to uh, minister just a little bit. Because sometimes we take Palm Sunday and Easter and, and it becomes, I hate to say this, but it's true, it becomes Easter bunnies and egg hunts. and Nothing wrong with kids having Easter bunny or egg hunt. I like my Easter bunny fried. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get all your mail, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It just, that's not what we're talking about. And I'm going to tell you, I'm fixing to say something that will get me a lot of dislikes, and that's all right. But I don't even believe that most of the church understands Tom Sunday. I, I just don't believe they do. I believe they say, oh, that's when the Lord rode into Jerusalem, it was. But it, what it stood for in the meaning. So I, I just want to take a few minutes to give you some studying points today on Hosanna. If you would bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we ask, Lord, that you'll anoint us, Lord, as we bring forth the word. Anoint our mind and tongue, God, let us just speak the things that you would have us. Open our hearts, Lord, that we might receive the word of God, and that it may be sown in the good ground of the heart and bring forth much fruit. In the name of Jesus, the devil will rebuke you, will rebuke you. If you do not steal, do not steal kill, kill, or destroy this word. And the church says, amen. amen. If you're able this morning, would you just stand? We're going to Matthew 21, verse number 8. It says, and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and straw and strode them in the way. And the multitudes that went before him that followed cried, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet, the Nazareth. Of Galilee, and the church says, Amen. "You may be seated." Number one is a lot of people, especially today, have turned against prophecy, and that's wrong. God has prophets, and every Christian has a right to prophesy. Can I say that again? God has prophets, and every child of God has a right. To prophesy, that's one of the gifts of the Spirit. But I just want to show you in the Scripture, I won't read them, but you can go there. In Isaiah 62, 11, he prophesied this, that the Lord was going to ride into Jerusalem. Zechariah 9 and 9 prophesied it, and Zechariah said he would be riding on a coat of a donkey that had never been ridden, the mother and the coat. And so what you see here was the Bible was prophecy being fulfilled. Amen? But that's not exactly what all this meant. Now here's what the world was wanting. Here's what these people wanted. You see, the world has its own set of values and its own way of looking at things. In the church, we cannot look at things through the world's eyes. Give me a drum roll on that. <laughs> I may not get real excited, so you're going to have to get me a drum roll when I need it. <laughs> But now, what happens is, 
Here's what the world wanted. They wanted somebody on a big white horse with an army around him to ride into Jerusalem and to take over Jerusalem and declare it to be free. And they would be so excited. They would be set free. I, I'm going to say this, and I'm not political, but I think a lot of the church was wanting Trump to ride into Washington, D.C. on a white horse and set Christians free. Number one, that's not God's way. I'm not, I'm not against or for. I'm just telling you that's not God's way. The church had a wrong look. We was looking at it through the world's eyes. And so... You know, we, we, we're used to seeing the generals walk into, drive into town with, with the army tanks behind them and all this. When, here's what the Lord did. He was on a borrowed baby donkey, coat donkey. A borrowed that had never been set on before. Now, if you're in royalty, you don't ride donkeys. I think about it. Anybody ever watch the old westerns? The poorest of the poor rode a donkey. The cowboys that were good rode horses. <laughs> and, and, and it's still true today. You, you don't see people saying, I got a good donkey, it rides good. But the Lord chose that I'm going to ride in and claim my kingdom on a borrowed donkey. You see, what we have failed to see this is what Jesus was doing was going in and claiming his kingdom. But pastor, he didn't have an army. That's what he wants the church to understand. That when you're in the kingdom of God, you don't need an army to be victorious. That the kingdom itself... He was riding in on his authority. And, and so he began to ride in. And they began to throw out the palm leaves. And they'd take their outer coats off and throw down. And they would throw things before him, hollering, Hosanna, blessed be the king. They were, you know what? I hope the word Hosanna just means save me. I thought it means save me. I'm going to get into that in just a little bit. But they were saying, save us, O king. And here Jesus, do you know that most of the people that was hollering Hosanna a week later was hollering crucify him, crucify him. We will put his blood upon our head. Why? Because they expected something one way and God says that's not the way I'm going to do it. Let me tell you something. There's a move of God that's going to shake America. That's going to bring salvation like we've never seen. But if you're set in your ways, you will not see what God's about to do. You're going to miss it out. You better understand that God claims His kingdom His way. So... But pastor, how was he claiming his kingdom? Because the world places the kingdom by materialistic things. They put their value in money, and power, in territory. You know what God says? This is what Jesus was doing. He was saying... Back at the beginning, when Adam sinned, and it caused a separation between God and man, and man was separated from the kingdom of God. Oh, we could still get there, but we had to go a certain way. We didn't have the freedom to be in the kingdom. You know what Jesus was doing? He was riding into Jerusalem. And he says, I've come to claim my kingdom. You know who the kingdom is? He says, the kingdom is you. He did not care about the earth. Why does he care about the earth? He owns it. Why did he care about this? He said, I already own it. I don't have to claim something I own. He said, I want that which has been separated from me back into my kingdom. I want my people back. So he rode in.
to get it. He said, them that believe upon me are going to receive of my kingdom. People There's things here, and I'm going to go back. To, I'm going to show you that this is a, that the things that was done this day was tradition. That the people that was doing this was doing this out of tradition. Did you know that? Did you know that everything that was done that day was done by tradition? They had done this for hundreds of years. It was stored in them. But you know what God wanted? He don't care how many palm branches you throw in front of them. He wants pure worship at all. He comes from your heart. That's what his kingdom is. He wants you to love him like he loves you. He don't care how many times you take off your coat. How many times that, that you throw that you throw things. That, he wants you to love him. He wants a relationship with his kingdom. So he's, he's running in. I'm going to show you that this was a custom from the time of Moses. In Psalms 118, if you'll just put that up, verse Sister Lisa, and I'm going to start in verse 21, but I want you to go verse 25 and 26 first. In this right here in verse 25, he says, Save now, if you was reading this in Hebrew, which was written, it would say, Hosanna. I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee. Listen to what it says. Send me now prosperity. Now I go to verse number 26. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. He said, Pastor, why do you go to these two, two, these two verses first? Do you know at the Feast of the Tabernacle, when they were doing the Feast of the Tabernacle, everybody there had to quote these two scriptures? Did you know that? That's what they did. That's why they knew to do this. The people that began to put this out, they were quoting these scriptures. Blessed be the Lord, or Hosanna to the King. They had quoted that from the time they was a child. Hosanna to the King. Hosanna to the King. I'm going to tell you something. If you think you're going to impress our Lord in Jesus Christ with your tradition, can I preach a minute? With your righteousness. Come on now. With what your parents did. With what your grandparents did. If you think you're going to impress God with any of that, you've done, dealt the wrong way. You're, you're like these people. You're throwing down palms in a tradition instead of doing it from the heart. God wants His people to have an experience in Him that you can say, Hosanna, Lord, save me. Because you know the blood of Christ has been shed for you. That you understand. And so they quoted these scriptures at the Feast of the Tabernacle every single year. They understood that. Okay. Have you ever noticed if we ain't careful, we get caught in praising God just out of habit? We get caught doing everything out of habit. Can I, do I have some people here are tired of habits? Can we stand and praise God right in the middle of preaching? <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, can, can we make the devil mad? Do I, have, do I have some adventurous people here today? Can somebody give me a twirl? Not because the God told you. Not because the pastor told you, just because you love God. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? You're getting out of tradition and you're beginning to please God. I'm feeling it right now. You see, we're so stuck in doing it our way that we fail to see what God has. When we begin to read what God has for us and what this journey set into progress, church, we are now born into the kingdom of God. We are children of the Most High God. Oh, hallelujah. You may be seated. It's just that... 
Let's go back up just for a second. I'm going I'm to be very quickly. I promise you, I'm out of breath. I'm very weak, but I'm going to preach just a few more. In verse 21, it says, I will praise thee. I'm in Psalms 118, 21. Is that where we're at? Okay. I didn't give her these before. I'm just telling her. That's why I'm saying this if you're watching. It says, For I praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. I just want you to look at this. He said, I'll praise you, God, for what you've done for me. Before you even do it, I'm going to praise you. Can we get out of this? We can only praise God at certain times. I mean, praise him because of who he is. And God never changes. Even if, you're, even if everything in your life is upside down right now and you feel like I can't make it another day, try praising God and see what happens. If you're watching this show right now and you've been, you're addicted to drugs and you say, Pastor, you want me to praise God? Just try it. I'm telling you, the drug habit can be broken right now. You see, the church, I heard somebody say this before, the church is just too quiet. We never tell people what God can do. We got people out there saying, boy, the church don't have no power. I'm telling you, the church doesn't have power, but God does. Tell them what God does. Let's go to verse 22. I'm going to try to be brief. Now, this ought to set good up all of us. The stone which the builders refused has become the chief, become the head stone of the corner. You see, they rejected Jesus. He rode in on the donkey beside the white horse. Ain't who we want. People reject the move of God because it don't fit their pattern. Ain't who we want. Can I make a, take a time make a quick announcement? I don't know if you like this person or don't. I'm telling you, I'm going to plan on being there. Do you know that Sean? How do you say it? Oh, wait. It's going to be in Knoxville Saturday. <laughs> Do you, did anybody hear that? Everywhere he goes, hundreds of people are getting saved and delivered and set free. And you know what the religious people are saying? I, I heard preachers say this last week or week before. said, that long-haired hippie don't know God. God, help us. Can, I'm just going to speak it out. I'm already numbered with the weirdos, so that's all right. Can I tell you this? God says I'll use who I want to use. I want to be in the presence of God. I don't know if he shows his audience, but if you see somebody six foot four, six foot six out there jumping up and down, and you're saying, what's that old guy doing for them young people? That's going to be Pastor Bill because I'm going to be rejoicing with the salvation and my God moving. I'd love to see everybody down there. You see, but what happens is they rejected Christ. So don't feel bad when they reject you. That's all I'm saying. Don't, you're going to be rejected. And when you get rejected, just don't feel bad. Just... They rejected Christ. This, verse 23, this is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Can somebody say this is the Lord's doing? And it's marvelous. Well, well Pastor, I, I don't see it that way. Can you just acknowledge that God still does things his way? Tell you what, you get somebody healed of cancer, you think they're going to worry about whether you are what they expect to be or not? They better be marvelous at the things of God. Yes. Young people being set free of drugs right. and people's lives being changed and established, right. you better be rejoicing. Yes. I tell you, I. Man, give me a drum roll. Get me up here, man. Now, if you notice this chapter, most of this we sang. We've sung in church for years. This is the 
uh, verse 24, this is the day the Lord hath made, and we would what do it? And do what? Does that mean just one day out of the year? Oh, come on now. Right, is somebody convincing me that God wants you to get up every day and rejoice and be glad in it? Come on, y'all bigger flakes than I am. Can somebody rejoice and be glad in it? Glory! This is what, this is Palm Sunday. This is rejoicing in the things of God. Let's go to the verse where I read. Hosanna now. Save now, Lord, I beseech thee. O Lord, I beseech thee. Send now prosperity. Here's what I'm about to say, and, and I know people say that doesn't mean prosperity like it does too. It means it has different meanings. But can I say this? God wants his people prosperous. Yes, he does. Yes, yes. And I'm gonna tell you something. It makes me sad to think of all the times I heard people preach that Christians can't have anything. If you're a true believer, you won't have nothing. That's no that's nowhere in the Bible. That's against the Bible. Every, they always quote that strip. The Lord said, well, how poor with you always. Yeah, the sinners. Because they're not under the blessings of God. But everywhere you read about God's people, he pronounces prosperity upon his people. It's God's good pleasure to bring prosperity. Glory to God. Can, can I say this? I'm going to lose things into your life that you're going to receive abundantly like you've never had. Going to come in by boatloads into your house. And you're going to say, where does it come from? You're going to say, because I'm a child of God. Glory to God. You see, we don't be afraid to preach the word. I could go along on that. I'm not going to go too far. You go to 26. Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. And this is what they were saying. Blessed. Hosanna unto David. Hosanna unto the highest. This is God's way. This is what God wants. God says, I bless and you bless me. Glory to God to that preach. Verse 27, I, I, I love this chapter. It says, God is the Lord, which has showed us light. Bind the sacrifice of cords, even unto the horns of the altar. In other words, God's going to give you a light. I want to just tell you about this light right here. The sacrifice, the cords and the horns of the altar, that's the price that was paid that brings you know what light that light means to us god's going to show us his scripture and his word like we've never seen it before you see there's people that's never heard of healing god's fixing to give you light into that do you understand it's up to the church to show the light you have to tell them you know god can heal you do you know God can change your life? See, you become the light, but it lights up their life. As, as their eyes open, they begin to see. And right now, you know what's happening in the world? They come to church, and the church is compromised. We don't want healing. We don't want the, the gifts of the Spirit. We don't want this. We don't want that. And so there's no hope out there, no light being shed. You know what happens when the church begins to show the light? You cannot show the light without showing Christ, and you can't show Christ without showing miracles. And then it brings hope because people's eyes begin to see. I have people, I had people all the time tell me, said, You mean that, Pastor, that I can be healed, or you mean I can be set free, or you mean I can be delivered? They absolutely never heard it. I'm talking about people who go to church. I've had people come in this church that's been going to church for 50 years and didn't know that they were able to be healed unless it was God's will. And I said, well, don't you understand it's always been God's will? You see what I'm saying? I've had people tell me, well, you can't pray to heal until you get an okay from God. 
I believe I got the okay at the cross. You see, I understand the light. But God, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to preach on if I don't stay on my notes too much. What verse am I on? 20, 28. Go to 28. I love this. Thou art my God. I'm going to tell you something, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. When you say this verse right here, you made a, you made a claim that will keep the devil out of your face and away from you. It will keep sickness away from you. It will keep things. Because you know what you just said? You're my God. In other words, it ought for him to be your God, you've got to be his child. So you just proclaim that God, I'm a child of God, and God's my God. And I will praise thee, and I will exalt thee. You know what? You know why we exalt God? We exalt God even in the worst of times. Read Chronicles, is it chapter 20? Jehoshaphat went before the people. He praised God at the word of God. When the prophet said that the victory is his, he began to praise God. He didn't wait for the victory. He began to praise God before time. Because that's what God says. Say thou art my God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to say what Samuel said. There is no God like my God. There is no rock like my rod. Hallelujah. Every God bows down to our God. Do you know that we have the only God that gave his life, rose again for us. Every other God, false God in the world, demands their followers to do things for him. And our God says, I've done it all for you. And that we have the only living God. How do you know he's living? Because he talks to me daily. Give the Lord a hand. Come on. I know I'm moving in low gear, but that's all right. I'm moving. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. He is good. And this is the one I want to go to. And his mercy endure forever. Can, can I have somebody read that again? Read, read oh, church, just start. Start, oh, give thanks. How many believe his mercy endure forever? How many truly believes his mercy endures forever? That means that his mercy is going to cover my multitude of sin. And if I struggle, I'll have to say, God, have mercy on me. And his mercy engulfs me again. It endures forever. Man. Out on that donkey that day. young coat and he began to ride and the people began to throw out worship him it looked pretty to the eye the bible says the, that the rulers in Jerusalem were afraid they were curious and they were upset it actually set in motion his death he knew this because they were upset and when Jesus got off the donkey, he didn't please too many people, if you read the rest of that chapter. You know what he did? He walked into the church, to the temple, overturned some money changers. And I, if I remember this right, he said, my house shall be called a house of what? So he didn't make a lot of friends that day. This is what I'm about to tell you right now. He is a friend that lasts forever. But he won't come down to your level. He's a friend that will go with you to the, no matter what you're going through, but he'll never come to your level. He'll bring you up to his level. That's what a true friend does. He picks you up to his level. That's why I can say I don't care where you are right now in this world that God can raise you up. I'm saying he can set you free he can deliver you 
No matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, you may be in the midst of the worst crisis in your family you ever had, and God says, I can heal that. You may be suffering the most grief that you could ever suffer. You may be laying in the hospital room right now, and the doctors don't say you don't have long to live. And God says, I don't go by these rules. It's my kingdom. I set my kingdom in motion. He didn't ride in to Jerusalem on a white horse because the authority that's in the church is in his name. And so he says, I can ride a donkey if I want. A borrowed donkey. But my authority goes still. And if you don't think he has authority, the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's King of kings. He's Lord. Everyone's going to confess it. There's people that laugh at the gospel right now and they make fun of it. I've never seen so many people openly mock the word of God as I have in the past few weeks. Openly make fun. Does it bother you? It bothers me for them. Because I think they're missing so much. They're missing the love of God. But can I say this? There will be a day that they're going to fall on their knees and cry out, Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I guarantee you they're going to be higher and Hosanna, save me. But can I say this? When you take your last breath, you can holler Hosanna all you want. It's not going to help you. As a tree falls, so shall it lie. But God told me when I first started my ministry, he said, as long as there's breath in them, there's hope. If you're here and you're listening to this, and you need hope, all you have to do is holler Hosanna. If you don't know how to say, forgive me, Lord, say Hosanna. He knows it. He knows your heart. You can say, oh, Jesus. He'll meet you right there, right now. Because that's why he wrote in. And you say, Pastor, how can I overcome? Because immediately when you holler Hosanna to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, you're into his kingdom. And he says, you're my child. And this is what he gives. And I'm closing with my last note. He says, I give you my authority my, to use my name for my authority. You know he said that? And he says, as my spirit come upon you, as the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he said, I give you all power. Now, I know in Acts it says, after that you receive power. After the Holy Ghost come up, you shall receive power. But the Bible says, rightly divide the word of God. Matthew 28 says this, Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth was given unto him. So what's he given unto the, us through the Holy Ghost? A little power? All power. You see what I'm saying? And so then you have power in your kingdom. In his kingdom, you have power. Because you're operating in his name. And it's a preach. Give me one more drum roll there, man. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. This is Palm Sunday. And, and we're not going to put out palms because you know what I want you to throw out this morning? I was going to, if I'd have had, if things would have been different this week, I'd have probably had some made. But I want you to throw out your heart. I want everybody in this building right now, I want you to, I want you to say, God, here's my heart. All that lives within me, I holler, Hosanna unto the King. Blessed be the King. And you begin to lift up the Lord. Right now, I want you just to begin to praise Him just for a second. Hallelujah. God, we praise you right now. Lord, we, ha we praise you of all that's in us, God. Lord, we're not asking God. We're not begging for you right now, God. We're just lifting up the name of Jesus. We're exalting thee. Thou art my God. Lord, you are the one that gives us prosperity. You are the one that gives us healing and miracles. Lord, and on this Palm Sunday, when many are waiting on the white horse, when many are waiting on the armies, God, Lord, we see the risen Savior that rose from that tomb that day. Oh, Kotabasi Katabasandai, the one that says, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Lord, and we ask right now, God, to receive our worship. Glory to God in Jesus' name. I, I'm going to just release right now. Does anybody need a special touch right now? 
Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's an anointing here. If you don't hear those that raise your hand, receive. I, I, I know right now the church, has been, the church has prayed for me, and I appreciate God has touched me mightily this week. I have felt the touch of God. I have listened to every, everybody that's given me scripture, every word that you give me, I have done, because I listen to God's word. But I, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. I want you to point your hand towards me right now, and I want you to say in the name of Jesus. I receive right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the boldness of my brothers and sisters. Lord, I thank you for them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before you leave this day, right, very quickly, I just want to encourage you. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. I want to see this place full. If you'll speak promise and hope, I don't want you to invite somebody to church, just invite them. Good Lord, there's a thousand things they'd rather do than be in church. I want you to invite them to a healing, invite them to a miracle, invite them to an encounter with God. Can we do that? And remember, those that are listening, if you did not hear, we ha I don't know how many's left, but there's some, there's some uh, prayer calls here that God told me to anoint. They're for special healings of cancer. If God speaks to you and tells you to get one or you, you need one, you come and get it or send me a letter or something. I'll see you get it. And what I want you to do is pray and write what God gives you as you receive it, give it to somebody else or you receive it. Because God says, I'm going to do 21 major healings. And I, I've already heard from some God's healing. God is moving. Amen. Do you love the Lord? Amen. Shake hands, smile, spread some sunshine. Did I miss anybody? Oh, right here.